Hi, this is Andreas and welcome to episode 4 of the Nothing But Tablets Android screencast. In this episode I'm going to cover something that's actually a bigger difference between Android and iOS than uh, a lot of people would think and that is handling applications or more specifically uninstalling applications because to actually well I'm also going to cover some aspects of installing them but for the most part you install applications on Android the same way you do on iOS you go into the App Store which is Google Play on Android uh, you find an app and then you click the button here on the side that either says the price of the app or um, if it's free um, and then if you have installed or bought it already it will say install instead of uh, the price so basically that's similar to uh, iOS you use Google's uh, wallet thing to uh, handle the money transfer and the app will simply install itself however once you have installed the app things start to work a little bit differently uh, first of all uh, an app will most likely put itself here on the home screen so if you do get an icon down here uh, on iOS you could normally just hold down on it and it will start shaking you click the X and that's when you actually uninstall the application because iOS only has the one home screen it doesn't uh, it doesn't separate between home screen and uh, an app screen so to speak so it doesn't require anything uh, any other place to handle uninstalling applications Android, however, uh, however, treats all of these icons as just shortcuts to applications hidden elsewhere in the operating system, uh, which is much more similar to how uh, uh, things work on Windows. So if you have a shortcut to a, a program on Windows, it, uh, it's actually just a shortcut. Um, it doesn't uninstall the application just because you delete the shortcut. So for instance here I have a shortcut to Dolphin, a web browser, so uh, I could add just another um, Dolphin shortcut just to demonstrate that this is definitely not the same as um, having the entire app because now I have two identical ones because these are just shortcuts and nothing else. So that begs the question how do you actually uninstall an application on Android well some launchers and I've covered launchers in the previous episodes allow you to do it from the app tray which is what I just went into by clicking a button that normally looks something along the lines of this one right to the right here the app tray essentially lists all applications you have on the operating system much like the home screen on iOS so I'm actually not sure if and uh, apparently not okay so this one actually allows me to uninstall applications by doing it this way uh, what I did right now was that I grabbed an icon and then it allows me to create a shortcut to it on the home screen or if I just drop it directly into the uh, recycle bin it asks me if I want to uninstall it uh, other launchers and home screens and app trays will ask you directly if you want to uninstall them while even others won't have that feature at all but as I've said in a previous episode because launchers aren't part of the base operating system the way they are on iOS that will actually differ so that's not a sort of a consistent way to uninstall them either because it completely depends on your browser. So the one way to uninstall applications um, on iOS, no, no on Android I mean, um, that's the same on each, uh, all devices, at least I hope so, is you go into settings, applications, manage ac applications, and then you browse down to find the application you want to uninstall um, and when you get into that you actually get uh, a few different options um, basically 
this is way more complicated than on iOS, which is sort of the problem. Force stop basically means that you can force the application to stop running if it runs in the background and is misbehaving or something like that. Clear data basically deletes whatever data the uh, application has um, uh, used on your device. Clear cache clears it ca its cache. Lunch by default that if you, this one is grayed out right now because there aren't any uh, application associations, but if I go down to say, um, what's the home screen I'm using in? So let's see if I can find ADW launcher. On this one, it actually says you have selected to launch this application by default for some actions. Uh, and that means that I have set uh, ADW launcher to be the uh, launcher that well, launches when I click the home button. Other examples of launch by default actions include if you click a video file and it asks you, to, asks you which video player to use by default. Um, this button will then allow you to clear those. So for instance, if you click a video file and you tell it to use MX video player uh, all the time and then you regret it at a later point you can go into manage application go into MX video player and then clear defaults and then the next time you open a video file it will ask you again whether or not you want to use an app as the default app for that file type and then at the right at the bottom here it says which permissions the app has because Android works differently than iOS in that it actually tells you what an app needs access to in order to work properly and um, uh, there's a few different reasons for this uh, perhaps the most important one is that android actually allows apps to have permission uh, to use more things in the operating system and more of the hardware if they require it but they do have to ask you for so if you have see an see a wallpaper application that needs permission to send the SMS in order to work, that's probably a sign that it's uh, malware, so we shouldn't use it. But basically, uh, in application info, this at the right bottom tells you what the app requires and what the app has permission for, and then you can just uh, shove all if there's there are more things than. Uh, fits on the small list but what I actually came in here to show you was this uninstall button I'm not going to uninstall my launcher because that would be bad um, then I would have to redo it uh, but basically if you click uninstall then it will uninstall the application obviously um, you can also go into Google Play and search for um, the app in there so if I search for uh, ADW um, and of course the search feature doesn't seem to be willing to list the most obvious result at the top there we go then you also have the option to uninstall it right here from the um, Google Play site for that app and if you buy an app and you decide to that you don't want it you have 50 minutes to uninstall it uh, before and if you do it during that time you actually get your money back so the uh, the button right here that says uninstall now if I buy an app and then that button will basically say refund for the first 15 minutes and if you click that refund button, it will actually refund the money you paid for it and un uninstall the application. So that's a nice thing about Google on uh, an Android that isn't on iOS is the automatic refund feature. So uh, uninstalling it here and uninstalling it in settings are basically the two different ways of doing it that's more or less similar on all devices. Um, 
Another thing to be aware of when it comes to installing applications on Android is that you don't actually have to install them from uh, Google Play. You can ins uh, install them from other app stores and you can actually uninstall them directly, sort of like uh, .exe files on Windows. Um, so what you have to do in order to uh, allow for and installing applications from other places than Google Play is to go into applications and there's this option here that says unknown sources allow installation of non-market applications and then you have to click make sure that one is checked and then you can start opening files to install applications and those files on Android are called .apk files uh, you should be aware that you shouldn't just go out and Google APK files to find uh, free software and stuff like that because a lot of the times uh, someone takes a legit application, uh, adds malware to it and then puts it online for free. So uh, that's not to say that Google Play is uh, free of malware either. So you do have to be careful about what you do. but. Uh, just be extra careful when you use this unknown sources option but at the same time it's also very useful for for instance circumventing the stupid um, compatibility checker if you have uh, if you have a tablet and a, and a phone and you need an app from one to the other and it says it won't work on the other but you think it will then you can transfer the apk file from one device over to the other and basically see if it works so uh, finally I'm going to cover something that's a big annoyance of Android uh, so inside the manage application menu um, there are several tabs that says downloaded all and running and there's a difference between downloaded apps and all apps because all apps also include the ones that came on the device when you first bought it and uh, if you're not rooted and you're not using the custom ROM or something like that, then there's a big chance that there will be quite a bit of uh, bloatware. Bloatware basically means software that the device manufacturer puts on your device in order to quote unquote help you, like the built in browser. Um, I don't use the built in browser, I use. Uh, Dolphin browser, I don't need a built in browser. However, as you can see, there's no uninstall button because Samsung don't want me uninstalling the only browser uh, that they think should be on the device, um, which is sort of annoying. If you have root, you can freeze it so it can't run and even forcibly remove it. But for a lot of applications that come with the device, you can never actually uninstall them. And uh, that's very annoying. Uh, I think that's basically sort of anti-Android because on Android you expect to be able to do whatever you want with your device and so having applications that you can't uninstall sort of defeats the purpose. So here's one example. Kias via Wi-Fi. Kias is sort of Samsung's version of iTunes. Uh, I don't like it, I don't want to use it, but I can't remove it, so that's just an annoyance. Um, something else with this is that sometimes there will be updates released to applications that come on your device. And even though you can't uninstall the applications, you can uninstall the updates. So for instance, Google Play Store, um, when I first got this device that was called Android Market and it was a previous version of it so it doesn't actually allow me to uninstall Google Play slash Android market however it does allow me to uninstall updates so if I click this button that says uninstall updates it would then roll back the application to what it was like when I first got the device uh, which means that I would once again have uh, Android market instead of Google Play and when I first booted it up, it will then it would then prompt me to um, update it to Google Play. So the reason why that's important is that 
sometimes they add features that you don't want in recent updates to the app um, other times you might want to or you might have to sort of reset the application so when Google Play was first released uh, when they made a jump from Android Market to Google Play a lot of people actually didn't get the update right away and one way to fool the update was to uninstall updates uh, to the current version of Android Market and then you would get the Google Play upgrade as part of the normal update that that feature prompts so just being aware that there's the difference between uninstalling applications you have put on there yourself and installing applications that came with the device and uninstalling updates to the, um, apps that came with the device can help you sort of understand how or why something works the way it works why you can't uninstall applications and even help you to fix issues with built-in applications so i think that's all for now i think i've covered most aspects of uninstalling applications on android um there's a lot to be aware of here you can just it's just not, uh, it's not just going to itunes clicking an application and then making the icon shake and remove it afterwards there's all these shortcuts and difference between native applications and non-native applications and all that sort of thing that you have to um, keep in mind when you're dealing with android in some ways it's more complicated uh, but in other ways it's also a more powerful way of doing it uh, so just be aware of the difference and you will be fine uh, once again thank you for watching this has been the android screencast episode 4 for nothing but tablets and yeah i see you later